Good morning. Rise and shine. Pastor Ken here. We're happy to be starting our day together, you and I. You uh, probably picked up already that uh, this week I'm doing a, a few sessions uh, to try to encourage new Christians. And we all need encouragement. And, uh, you know, it's one thing for new Christians or for people to get saved and, and uh, get baptized, but uh, they need to be nurtured and discipled and mentored. And, and um, it's a process. It really is a process. And that's where the older Christians should come in to help. And I, I, uh, I ask you as a, some of the older Christians, uh, if you know a young Christian, befriend them and, uh, and uh, get to know them and spend some time with them. Don't give up on them and uh, be patient with them. And they've been born into the family of God, so they're a little child spiritually, even though they may be older physically. So, uh, you know, put that appeal out there. But for those that are new Christians, uh, I tried to get you started in the Gospel of John to read the Word of God, okay? In John chapter 2, 1 and 2, John is standing on the banks of the Jordan River, sees Jesus coming and says, this is one of my favorite verses, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. He came to take it away. Sin's a terrible thing. Sin is a destructive thing. It has many forms. I know you're sick and tired of it. That's why you've come to Christ, to, to given your heart to Christ and to be saved. What I'd like you to do is, come on, I want to teach you to search the scripture a little bit. I've already told you where that was. It's within the first two chapters. See if you can find where it says that John called Jesus the Lamb of God. You see, in the Old Testament, a lamb had to be shed. I had to be killed and the blood shed in order for sins to be forgiven. That was the sacrifice. Jesus came. Jesus came, and his blood was shed on the cross of Calvary so that you and I can have our sins taken care of, forgiven and taken out of our life. Now, because we, because we live in a fallen world, a very fallen world, and sin abounds everywhere, and we... Because of our Adamic fallen nature, we still have lots of times when we fall short of the glory of God. And yes, even sin. What do you do with that? First John 1 and 9, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Taste confession and honesty and repentance on our part. Do it as quickly as you realize you've sinned. Do it sincerely in a repentant attitude. He's already paid the price for your sin. And remember, John says, he is a lamb of God that comes to take away the sin of the world. He'll take yours away. He never gets tired of doing it. He'll continue to do it until you sin less and less. You may never be sinless, totally sinless in this world, but you should be sinning less and less. He comes to take away the sin of the world <clears throat> because he is the Lamb of God. Find that, find that. 
and it'll help you to search the scriptures. Now, there's another verse that I want to give you. It's another one of my favorite verses. It's there in John as well. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's a great verse to memorize. Okay? So I'd like you to find those two verses because the Bible says, search the scriptures. They're all within the first three chapters of the Gospel of John, where I've encouraged you to read. If you're a new Christian and you find them, just let me know about them. That'll be very good for you, it really will. Those of you that are older Christians don't need to do that, uh, but I'm talking about the new Christians, okay? Now, I want to move on for just a moment to um, something else that uh, is very, very important. It might help you. I know it will help you in your morning devotions. Fred Hawkins, God bless you, buddy. Uh, he wrote in yesterday and said, a long time ago, after I got saved in vacation Bible school, I developed a habit of every morning I read a verse from the Bible. And I did it every day. And after a while, it became a habit, a good habit. Okay? Bible says to check out the Bible, read the Bible, study the Bible, for in the Bible you got eternal life, everlasting life. Thanks, Fred, for that great word. Appreciate you following us on Rise and Shine. Have a good day, by the way. And uh, I told Chris the other day that you said hi. Anyway, uh, there's something else. Fred said he always has devotions. Now, this book right here is what we use in our our church. It's our daily bread. And uh, this is a devotional book. We use this. Uh, you know, it's a great inspirational. It's well written. And uh, I, I like it. My wife uses it every day. So get one of these. You, you know, you can get one at church. We have them at church. They're free. Here's the one for July 22nd. I just happened to open it up. It starts out with a scripture, 2 Chronicles 20, 5, 12 to 15. We will stand in your presence and will cry out to you in our distress. Hmm. There's nothing like being in the presence of God. And you can pray to the Lord and seek his help. Remember, the same as a father loves his children. God is your heavenly father. He loves you. And Jesus is your savior, your redeemer, and your elder brother, your family now that you've been saved, okay? So, seeking God's help. In the 1800s, this is an old, old story. For five consecutive years, grasshoppers descended on Minnesota, destroying the crops. Farmers tried trapping the grasshoppers and, uh, uh, and putting tar on and burning their fields to kill the eggs. They tried all kinds of things to get this plague stopped. Desperate and on the very verge of giving up and almost starving, the, the people in that area 
sought a statewide day of prayer and asked God for his help. And they set aside April the 26th to pray. And they reached out on God and asked God for a miracle. In the days after the collective prayer, the weather got really warm and the eggs started to come to life. But then four days later, a drop in the temperature surprised and delighted everyone for the freezing temperatures killed the larva. Minnesotians, once again, would begin to farm and harvest their crops of corn and wheat and oats. Does God still do that? He hears your prayer. You know, you read a story like that first thing in the morning, it encourages you to, encourages you to believe God for nice, good, wonderful things in your life. Okay? This little book will help you, Our Daily Bread. Okay? Has God answered any prayers for you yet? Well, you know the fact that you're saved, born again. A new Christian is a real answer to prayer. Okay? What situations in your life do you need to pray about today, new Christian? Why don't you do what my wife does every day and get a prayer journal and write down your prayer requests? Pray to God by writing it down. Just like you're writing a love letter to God. I sometimes do that. It'll work for you. It'll help you to pray better. Remember that God always hears your prayer. Sometimes he answers yes. Sometimes for your betterment, he answers no. Sometimes he answers you wait a while. This isn't the right timing. And remember when God's answering your prayer that you've asked, he always answers according to his word. If because of your limited knowledge you're asking him for something that is against the word of God, the answer will be no. But God wants to answer your prayers. He wants to be called into your situations. I remember being in old Mexico one time and the pastor told me that they'd gone through a severe drought. They'd called everybody in the valley that was a Christian to come together. Said they were gonna pray for rain. He told me this with his own mouth. He said, uh, gathered and they all begin to get on their knees before God in the little humble chapel there in old Mexico. And they prayed and people were crying out to God and asking God for rain. They hadn't seen a dark cloud in, in months. They're, they, they were in a serious drought. And he said all of a sudden he opened his eyes and he began to look out the window. He saw a black cloud coming across the sky and come right into their area. And he said it was no time at all before it was raining. Now, I don't know. I've never prayed too much about the weather. I figure God's got that under control. But I've had a million prayers probably that I've had to pray to God. A lot of them about myself. A lot of them relating to other people. And I've prayed. And he's answered. God's answered a prayer for you today. Or if you have devotions every morning, if you'd like to get on and say something that would encourage new Christians or, or help them, that would be a welcome deal. Really would be. Dear Father, teach us to pray as you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless.